so then the last thing uh, to look at before we do it with, with uh, load on the end is how to tie off. Um, so there's also a couple different, you know, ideas about how uh, best to do this or what's the right way to do this. The answer, I think, is that it should be consistent, right? So that every single line in here gets tied off the exact same way. So that, again, if you're not working in here for a month, when you come back, you know, okay, this is how stuff gets tied off in here, hmm. right? And it's not consistent right now, you know? Um, you know, it's not that any of them are necessarily wrong, right, but it is, What's nice about the consistency is if you come up to it, you know, okay, I can remove these three loops of rope and it's only holding the coil. And then I also know I can take off a turn or two before I have a problem, right? Whereas maybe the other guy ties it with, you know, one less turn than you or ties it to the other side of the pin or does something different with the, with the rope. So it's harder to know, well, wait a second, when, is it, when am I gonna start taking weight on? on this knot. Um, so I, you know, that's why I think the consistency is important. Um, you know, and I don't know what the sort of desire here is, uh, but I would certainly encourage you to sort of adopt a, a more of a standard because there's certainly a couple different styles going on on the yeah. rail here. Um, and again, not to say that anything, any of them are wrong, just I don't know what I'm getting myself into when I, when I approach this, right? Um, the way I sort of always uh, tie it off myself is coming down the left side of the pin um, and around the bottom. And again, that as soon as we get that first turn on, right? So when we talk about when we start doing this with weight, you have so much more control there, right? We've taken a turn. In this case, that's that that small d to d ratio is kind of helpful because it puts some extra friction in there, right? Again, running it on that pin, maybe that does start to, to bite us, but to hold it there, it's great, right? And as soon as you get that first turn on, you have some control. Depending on how heavy the piece is, you may not have all the control, but you have some control. And as soon as we get that on, now we want to be conscious of keeping our tension throughout as we tie, right? So the next step, not step on your rope, um, is to cross the rail, right? not coming up the side, right? we want to cross, because what that does is as we continue, that puts another point of friction here. Whereas if we come up the side and around, now we aren't gaining as much friction there. Um, all right, so we want to cross here, and we want to be careful that we don't introduce some slack into the knot as we go, right? Um, which is easier said than done when it's only one line and you don't have any weight on it. Um, so, so I will usually, hold here to help keep that tension, right? So then as I cross, now I can pull this tight, right? And then I'm gonna cross again, pull that tight, and then all we need to do is then turn it and lock it like so. Now this is where it's also really easy to lose all that tension you just created. If I'm not careful, right, that tension will have worked itself back around, right? So if instead, again, I can, I can help myself out by doing that and holding that tension there. That's all it should need, right? Now, and again, I always tie it so my line is on the left. Um, it makes sense to tie everything on the right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, again, it's nice to know what you're getting into, right? The other way that sometimes you'll see this done um, is crossing over this one like so, right? And then locking it that way. What's really nice about that is it puts this in the middle of your knot, so you have sort of the most advantage of friction. It's much harder to do when mm -hmm. you're under tension and you're dealing with three or four lines. So this is nice, but it's hard to do. So again, I've always sort of defaulted to coming on the left side of the pin, <clears throat> under, top, under, lock, Right, and it, that should that should be all you need, um, right? And then again, I know next time, I, I know how many turns there are before that weight is going to start to get me in trouble, right? Um, 
Uh, and then same thing when we look at these here in a second, right? The way that we coil these ropes, if that can be consistent, so you know it's you know these these four, and then our coils loose, as opposed to did someone coil on the pin, or is there some other way that it's the way that it's been done? Um, uh, and then the other thing that is the other thing that's cool about this knot, right, is what you can do in the right circumstances to, to lose the knot is you can just pull your pin, right? Now, that's not always the right answer because sometimes you have something very heavy on the end of it, um, right? But that, do, that, is an, that option does exist, again, in the right circumstances. When you're unloaded, you want to get that knot off there quickly, et cetera, right? Um, the other sort of part of this, that if you, let's say my pipe's on the ground, my short line is like, yeah, it's not long enough to tie that, to tie that uh, knot, right? And if we don't have load on it, right? Really, you can get away with an unloaded line, like just to keep it from running, you can get away with, with that. 